Uh, uh, once again, entering into a section here where Jesus is doing a lot of teaching. And the thing that um, I've been trying to point out uh, on a variety of times is that um, keep in mind that Jesus is not just going around teaching just to uh, put on a show or have something to do or just to be able to um, you know, accomplish day-to-day uh, -day activities. His purpose for doing it is that he's trying to give and impart unto us because he knows that he is uh, the truth. He knows he is the way. He knows he is the light. And he, uh, and he also knows uh, the Father because he says that he was with the Father. And he is a, and, and his reality and his spiritual truth that he brings uh, comes from a spiritual understanding. We don't have that. We know about natural things. And so he's trying to help us to gain a concept of what spiritual things are and what they do and how they interact with us here in the natural. Uh, as a child grows up, the child learns that, you know, you stand up and you lose your balance, what happens? You fall. Uh, well, we understand about water and, and, and a variety of different ways that we use it for cleaning, for playing, for, uh, for drinking. We, those are just natural things. But what do we know about the spiritual stuff? How does, how does life actually uh, interact in the spiritual realm. What is it that actually produces um, uh, 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 an awareness that I'm not natural, but I'm spiritual? Well, we don't know that. We can't, I can't answer that. But Jesus knows. And so in his teachings, he's trying to give us these glimpses, these little peaks into what it is that that he and the Father sees in us and why it was worth going through what he went through to redeem us. And he's trying to get us to understand that about ourselves, about who we are and what it is. And, and to do that in the midst of all the lies that this world tells. And how do we cipher between it? How do we find the realities that are connected to both spiritual and natural versus the, the lies that only will satisfy and glorify the natural man for a what? For a time, for a season. So that's what these teachings are all about. Well, one of the most uh, uh, consistent um, uh, uh, natural events that happens is, is one of the things that we're going to talk about today. Right? Marriage, divorce, um, these things are a reality of what we uh, experience and what we deal with on a continuous basis. And so we're going to get a chance to see Jesus is going to make a comparison. All right? He's not going to give you the whole 100% as to what it is that you're supposed to be doing. He's going to give you a comparison. Now, we also have to keep this in mind, that um, good morning. when he's talking about these things, hey, good morning, good morning, come on in. My wife has the, the, the kids in the, in, in the other room in there. Good morning. All right, so um, we're on story 203. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I don't think I got any more papers here. Nope, that's it. All right. So, um, <clears throat> just uh, so, so when we... Uh, when people come in, if we don't, we're also, this is also parallel in Matthew 19, 1 through 12, and Mark 10, 1 through 12. So, uh, just, just we want to look at it in your Bible. All right, so, when we go through this, thank you, sir. 
when we go through this lesson, we can actually begin to see that Jesus is trying to point out an everyday activity that we do that is something that impacts us uh, severely, and that is marriage and divorce. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and take a listen. Let's see what we have here. I don't, but uh, this one is parallel in Matthew 19, 1 through 12, so you can get it right in your Bible, and also Mark 1 through 12. Mark 10, 1 through 12. All right, let's take a listen. Section 14, Jesus' ministry in Judea. Story 203, divorce, adultery, and celibacy. And rising up, he went from there, and he came to the region of Judea and beyond the Jordan. And again, great crowds followed him and gathered around him. And once more, according to his custom, he began to teach them, and he healed them there. And some Pharisees came up to him to test him, and they began to question him, saying, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause at all? And he answered and said to them, What did Moses command you? And they said, Moses permitted a man to write a certificate of divorce and send her away. But have you not read that he who created them from the beginning of creation made them male and female? And he said, For this cause a man will leave his father and mother and will cleave to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. Consequently, they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together let no man separate. They said to him, Why then did Moses command to give a certificate of divorce and to put her away? And Jesus answered and said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment to you. Moses permitted you to divorce your wives, but from the beginning it has not been this way. And again in the house, the disciples questioned him about the same thing. And he said to them, I say to you, Whoever divorces his wife, except for immorality, and marries another woman, commits adultery against her. And if she puts away her husband and is married to another, she commits adultery. The disciples said to him, If the situation of a man with a woman is like this, it is good not to marry. And he said to them, Not everyone receives this word, but those to whom it has been given. For there are eunuchs who were born that way from their mother's womb, and there are eunuchs who were made eunuchs by men, and there are eunuchs who kept themselves eunuchs because of the kingdom of heaven. He who is able to receive it, let him receive it. All right, we thank God for, for that. Um, so when we look at this story, it is, it is imperative that you take this story and not just lift it up out of it and, and, and read it for what it says by itself. But you have to include the context. Why is Jesus telling the story and for what reason? What's the reason for telling the story? Because there's a lot of things that you will say in a, in, in a situation amongst certain people for a specific cause that if you were around a different crowd or a different place or, or with different people, you wouldn't say it. There would be no need. So therefore, let's make sure that we understand. Who is Jesus talking to when he, when he starts this off? Who has all of these prior conversations been going, uh, uh, been, been, he's been having uh, with? What are the, uh, the targets of his instructions. <coughs> he's talking mainly to the crowd, but who's been coming up asking him questions, wondering about certain things? What group? Pharisees. The Pharisees. The Pharisees. The religious leaders. Now, so therefore we got to understand, what is it about these Pharisees? What is it that they do? And what is Jesus attacking here? Because this is an attack that Jesus is trying to get the Pharisees to say, you guys are trying to justify your actions. But in reality, you can't. Who is the only individual that can say, I walked on earth and has never made a mistake? 
Jesus. The Pharisees, though, believed that they were able to justify themselves. Mm -hmm. So, part of their custom as to what they did, they went back to the law of Moses. And Jesus points out here, we're going to see this in a bit. And they saw that the law of Moses said, oh, you can write a bill of divorcement, hand it to your wife, and get out of the marriage. And so, because the Pharisees always are trying to be what? Self-righteous. Mm -hmm. They took that and said, well, according to Moses, because I happened to, I was walking in the square one day, and I saw this other lady, and we started talking, and the next thing I know, I like her more than I what? I like you. So, but I'm a Pharisee. I would never commit adultery, or nor will I ever do anything wrong on that respect. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go and use the law of Moses, and I'm going to write a bill of divorcement, I'm going to hand it to her, and guess what? Now I'm divorced from her. Now what can I do? Now I can go marry this other person. Mm -hmm. But what was the real reason? What was he really doing? What was the Pharisee actually doing? Testing him. Trying to test Jesus. Right? But, but, but he was using the what? The laws of Moses, Moses for his own personal Dang. benefit. Yeah. Because guess what? Six years later, he gonna meet somebody else. And what's gonna happen? Same old same. same. He gonna write another bill of the walking. Mm -hmm. So, but yet in his mind, in the mind of the Pharisee, what was he what was he thinking? That he was doing what was right. I'm going to the Mosaic law. According, I'm, I'm yeah. following the word of God. Mm -hmm. That's 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 the way they're gonna put mm -hmm. it. Oh, I'm a godly man. Oh, I would and they they had that mosaic track record that they could say. And, and therefore, they can always feel what? Self-righteous. Mm -hmm. And what was the main attack that Jesus has always had on the Pharisees? That you feel that you are not sick and you don't need a physician. That's right. Mm -hmm. And I only come for those that are what? Sick. That are sick. Right. And because you say you are not sick, you cannot know me. That's right. So their efforts to continuously be self-righteous I'm going to be righteous on my own efforts produces their ineligibility for salvation. Mm -hmm. You have to admit that you need Jesus. That's right. And that's the whole purpose. And the key to the law of Moses was not to take the law of Moses and try to be perfect. The law of Moses was a what? A mirror. Mm -hmm. You look at the law of Moses and it says you should not do this and you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do this and you should not do this. And if you do this, you better make sure you do that. If you do that, and you look at it and you, you, you're supposed to come to the conclusion, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, 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 can't, I can't keep this. Now, once you come to that conclusion, now you recognize that if I can't do it on myself, I need what? Help. I need help. That's right. And that's the part of the experience of getting to know God that not only have the Pharisees misunderstood and then consequently misused, but God knows it happens today. Oh, yes. People that just think that, well, you know what? I'm going to be, I'm gonna be uh, justified in my own actions. But being justified, they find these little things and these little things, these little uh, uh uh, scriptures that they can apply mm -hmm. and they become what? Self-righteous. Yeah. And then they also become judgmental because they find stuff and they say, ooh, if I'm able to appear this way, why shouldn't you? Now the Pharisees were like that because when the Pharisees decided you shouldn't eat certain things or walk a certain, certain uh, distance on the what? Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. When what did Jesus do when he came? He made sure he ate certain things and he walked a little bit more than what they were supposed to because he wanted to point out your little stuff that you got, you're not applying that to me. I know what righteousness is and I bring righteousness. Now, once you've accepted Jesus' righteousness, what are you supposed to do? Grow in it. You develop. You thank God. But even in your growing and in your development, you don't you don't purchase your righteousness. All right? And I like to use the illustration sometimes. If somebody just gives you a brand new car, just hand it to you, paid for everything, tank full of gas, all brand new, it's all good. 
Now, you got that brand new car. How much did you pay for it? It was given to you. Right. And, then, and it's got a tank full of gas. Oil's been cleaned and everything. And you drive it. All you got to do is get in, turn the key, and go. All right. But now, after about two, three weeks, if you're driving it, is there something that you still may need to do just to what? Keep it going. Keep it going? Yeah. What is it that you need? You got to add to it. Oh, you got to put some gas in it? Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, so you mean I, 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 don't, I can't just do any kind of driving and just, just go and never have to stop and no, refill? Check the oil sometime. Got to check the oil sometime. But wait a minute. Why should I have to check it? It was free. It was given to me. But you show what? You show the, the, appreciation. the, the appreciation yeah. and you understand the value. You have to what? Learn of a car. Because yeah. even before that, you also, if somebody gives you a brand new car and you don't have no driver's license, what's the first thing you got to do? Yeah. You got to go learn it. You got to go learn. So when the Lord gives us mm -hmm. stuff, he gives us what? Salvation. Right, man. We then go into his word and we what? We learn. We learn of him. That's right. And we learn how to apply, how to put things in, how to keep the, the gifts that God has given us. Because you know that God has given everyone a gift. Amen. But until you actually get to that situation where you have uh, where, where God has revealed it to you. And I don't want to say it like, well, you got to hit a certain level because that's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is when God is, when it is time for your gift to be revealed. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times people like to think, well, once you get to a certain level in God, God will show you your gift. You know, cause you get it. But it's, your gift will be shown to you when it's time for it to be shown. Right? Samson's gift was shown to him. And Samson was not a certain, at a certain level. Mm -hmm. Moses' gift took him, what, 40 years. Mm -hmm. But then he had to spend another 40 years doing what? Learning. Mm -hmm. And when he finally got a chance to use his gift, he was how old? 80. 80. Mm -hmm. My Lord. No help. So, just allow mm -hmm. God to what? Work in you. Right? And you'll begin to understand what it is. Now, I had to bring this whole preliminary out. Because a lot of times, people want to take this scripture and they 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 take it and they apply it in a variety of ways that it wasn't the purpose for why Jesus told the story. Mm -hmm. He told the story to make sure that no one uses the laws of Moses and for that case the word of God that we have today mm -hmm. inappropriately. He also wanted you to know what was the main purpose for what God put a man and a woman on, on this planet for and that was for what yeah, for a man to be with a woman right. that was the main purpose so and he and he went through that but then he also said but yet God knew the problems of men so therefore he permitted Moses to write what that's that uh, right. amendment yeah. in his word mm -hmm. that said that there for certain causes there were excuse me that for certain causes there was a permission for divorce but the Pharisees took it and what Manipulated it and misused it. Yeah. All right. So that was uh, the important part that I want to make sure that we understand. Now, we're going to be looking at uh, at this teaching. We're going to break it down just a little bit. Um, uh, but let me tell you, it's, it's hard to say something and improve. You cannot improve upon what Jesus has said. So we're just going to highlight it. Amen. All right. Now, this is also parallel to Matthew 19, uh, verses 1 through 12, also in Mark. 10 verses 1 through 12. So let's look at what it says in the Murray's Gospel here. And it says, And rising up, he went from there. And remember, he's traveling, going from where? From place to place, teaching. And he came to a region of Judea. So now he's in where? In Judea. Judea. And uh, beyond the Jordan. And again, a great what? Crowd. Crowd follow. Now, we talked about the crowd. We've been talking about the crowd since we started this whole journey through this merged gospel, right? Mm. What, a, what is it about the crowd? What's in there? All, kind of All kinds of people. There are people in there that only want to see what? A show. I just want to see another miracle. I want to see somebody raised from the dead. There are people in there that are just uh, curious. Who is this man? What is he? What is he doing? There are people in there that actually think and believe this man might be the Messiah. Mm -hmm. There are people in there that believe that. There are people in there that don't like Jesus. Amen. And they're following him because they want to find a way to what? To condemn him. The Pharisees, Sadducees, 
the people whom Jesus already has called what? He called them what? Hypocrites. Hypocrites. What else did he call them? He said, snakes. you said, he called them snakes. He called them vipers. Uh, he told them, he said, uh, 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 he called them a wicked and adulterous generation. He called them a wicked and adulterous yeah, generation. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. Jesus know how to call somebody some names. <laughs> isn't he? Yes, he does. And then he told them, he, he said that you say that you are children of Abraham. I say unto you that your father is what? The That's devil. devil. <clears throat> so, these, the, all of these folks are what? In the crowd. Yeah, in the crowd. These are the kind of folks that are following. So a lot of times we see the crowd and we think that, oh, wow, this is great. We got the crowd. You got all kinds of stuff in the crowd. You got godly folks and you got devilish folks. Amen. You got confused folks. You got curious folks. Amen. You got folks that believe in you. You got folks that don't want to believe. Mm -hmm. They're all part of the what? All part, all part of that crowd. And that's who's following Jesus. Mm -hmm. All right? And it says, and, gath and, and gathering around him, once more, according to his custom, he began to what? Teach them. All right? he, he's letting them know. I'm going to tell you. Now, like I said in the beginning, what is he trying to get us to understand? If you could see about you what God, what the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit sees about you, mm -hmm. you wouldn't put yourself through some of the stuff. You would see yourself as more valuable. You see, um, if I got an, if I, I, I open up a can of soup, I got a can of soup. I open up, I pour the soup in this, and I got the can sitting right here. That can is made of what? Usually it's made of what? Tin. Okay. All right, I got that can sitting right here. Then I go and I get uh, my wife's wedding ring. It's made of metal, a certain kind of metal. It's got some, some white gold on it, and it's got a diamond in it. And I put that next to the can. Right now, they're both elements, but one has greater what? Value. Right. So one of those things, when I'm done with it, is going to go back to the person I love. Mm -hmm. The other one is going where? In the garbage, mm -hmm. in the recycle. Right? Why? Because of the value that's in it, and that's what God sees in us. See, he don't see, he doesn't see us the way we should be seen, mm -hmm. because see we are we are born in sin, sin. shaped in iniquity. Our best righteous, our best righteousness is what filthy rags. So in reality, we should be viewed as the the used, finished, done with ten can. Mm -hmm. Amen. But instead of that, and that's what the devil tries to convince God that we are. Amen. But guess what? In reality, we, we, we kind of are. That's how we are in our behavior, mm -hmm. in our actions, and in our bringing. Born in sin, that means you were what? Born, Born with sin. Mm -hmm. uh, raised in what? Iniquity. Yeah. That means that we're raised in a way that teaches us to refine and perfect our sin. Mm -hmm. So that means we're doubly sinners. Born in it and raised in it. Mm -hmm. Jesus, so... How worthless are we? Mm. So therefore, when you begin to understand the grace and the love of God, mm. that he says, no, I don't see you as a, as a used up, ready for the trash heap, tin can. I see you as a diamond mm. that I want to bring and connect with me. Because Jesus calls the church, those that believe in him, his what? His bride. So Jesus wants to bring the church, the collective of us, as close as a husband would bring his what? His wife. Right. And so that's the relationship that God wants to have with us. He's not tossing us aside like a tin can. Mm -hmm. He's going to bring us and connect us with him for all eternity. Mm -hmm. And that's what the teachings that Jesus is trying to get across. All of these teachings are just not a lot of babble and talk and conversation just to be having it. He's trying to get you to understand you have value to God. More so than even we have value to each other. How much do we think we need one another? Well, we do. Mm -hmm. we, we're glad to be around and to see and to help and to be with other. But God says no one can see you with all the, all the possibilities that you have like I can. Mm -hmm. I see you in a way that nobody else will be able to see you. But that's why I died for you. Mm, thank you, Jesus. 
That's why I came for you. That's why we're celebrating this season. Because of what? His love for us. Mm -hmm. All right? So he's trying to get us to see that. So he's doing all this teaching. All right? And, um, and let's go on. It says, and he healed them there. He did what? He healed them there. So therefore, he recognizes that because we're born in sin, shaped in iniquity, we have what? We got needs. Sin deforms. Sin cripples. Sin breaks. Sin uh, misuses. Sin uh, makes uh, uh, inadequate. And all those things, Jesus does what? Heals. He heals all that. Right? That's what he does. That's what the, he, and he's doing it to show that that's how, that's a, that's a glimpse of what you will be when you shed your natural and emerge into your spiritual. See, when we emerge into our spiritual, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard the things that God has prepared. And sometimes we think about, when it says things, we think about like trinkets, like how we think about things in a natural world. But think of the things of what God has put into you. The, the wonders that you have. When you go back into Isaiah and Ezekiel, and it gives a description of Satan before he, before he, fall, he fell, and it said that he called him, uh, his name was Lucifer, son of the what? Of the morning. Mm -hmm. Son of the morning. And, uh, and they said that he had jewels. jewels yeah. Like, when God made man, he made man from the what of the earth? The dust. dust. Lucifer wasn't made from the dust. Lucifer was made from jewels. Mm -hmm. He was, and, and when he talked, he didn't talk like, talk, he talked harmoniously. He said he had pipes and all that was in, and, and he was glorious. Mm -hmm. But see, he, he allowed his what, all that goodness that God put in him to get to what? To his head. To his head and he began. Don't so, he bigger than the boss. There you go, trying to mm -hmm. raise, raise above that who, who created him like that. Mm -hmm. Now, why am I saying that? I'm saying that because when you enter into your spiritual realm, when, when God calls us into, into the into, uh, 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 into eternity. Mm -hmm. The things that God has prepared for you that you will enjoy as a spiritual entity, as a spiritual being, I can't describe to you. That's right. But it's going to be better than this. I know that's right. It's going to be way better. The scripture says it's not worthy to be what? To be compared. Mm -hmm. So you got a lot. And God already sees you in that because there is no problem with time with God. When God looks at us, he don't just see the tin can. He sees the what? The finished product. He sees the diamond ring. He sees what you want to be in the spiritual reality. He sees the spiritual you. So he sees you in your super form. He sees you in your... In your I was, uh, last night I was watching the, uh, the Justice League. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. And so he sees you in your, in your Justice League. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, he sees you in your X-Man form, yeah. you know, or let's just say in your Jesus, Holy Ghost filled form. Like, yeah, that's how he sees you. But when I, when I look at, you know, I, I, see, I look in the mirror, I see gray, gray beard, you know, no hair. <laughs> <My man. laughs> uh, what you laughing for? <laughs> See the same thing over there, bro. That's what I was going. I was looking at you. I thought you were male, right? And, and you young folks, y'all y'all on your way. Time coming. Y'all on the same train. <laughs> You're getting there. Eh? And so, but God don't he don't see that. Amen. That's not what he was redeeming. He redeemed that you that he sees. That he's trying to get you to understand this is why the devil doesn't want you to make it. That's right. Because he don't want you to see you like this. God sees it. Question, mm -hmm. uh, Brother Teacher, and I've shared this with people, and I'm just looking for a confirmation from you also. What you just said about when God, you can figure with Job, um, just a sidebar, the devil knew how faithful Job was, but he, he said to God, if you take the hedge from around him, X, Y, and Z will happen. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, even with us today, like you just said, the devil gets a chance to peek at what God's going to do in your future. Mm -hmm. And he tries to camouflage other stuff and get you to derail before you can get to what God has for you. Mm -hmm. do, you do you agree with that? Without, without and this that. is what happens a lot of times. And this is why where people don't come to Christ because the enemy wants them to think what they're dealing with out here is so much more important than what God has for you. And it's all camouflage. Because yes, if he lets you see it like it is, mm -hmm. you will run away from it. That's it. 
Yeah. I just want to hear somebody else say it because I've shared that with the church, that's and I just want to make sure I'm wrong. With no, you're, you're true. Yeah. The scripture tells us that without what faith, mm -hmm. it is impossible to please God. So you got to have faith because you don't see it. Right. So I, I, I but I was told by God through His Word that that that. that my end will be greater than my beginning. Mm -hmm. All right. So the struggles I go through, the difficulties I may have, are not to be compared to what God's going to do. Now, I don't actually see that. So I have to what? Believe it by faith. faith. All right? You think about who, who's considered the father of faith. Abraham. Mm -hmm. God told Abraham he was going to be the father of what? Many nations. Mm -hmm. And through him all nations will be blessed. Man, he had a child. Not one child. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you mean I'm going to be the father of many nations? I don't even have a, I don't have a son. Every time me and my wife try to, and then they try to figure it out. And, then, and that's the wrong thing to do. Don't, don't figure it out. Just believe. Mm -hmm. And, you know, then they, them and Sarah tried to do that little thing, and that's how Ishmael got, got mm -hmm. born. But that wasn't what God was talking about. He was going to have a child through Sarah. Mm -hmm. that's right. And so at that time, it happened. But the, the weight, man, the weight. So that's, that's what gets us. And that's one of the things that the devil tries to, to harp on. Look at your situation what? Now. Like you said, Job. Look at you now, Job. And his friends came around and guess what they said to him? Look at you now, Job. What's going on with you? What did you do? But you hang on to your what? Your confidence in God. So when tough times come, difficulties happen. Okay. I didn't say this. God said this. And this is what he said. I'll never leave you, no. nor forsake you. Hallelujah. So now, you're in a situation where you feel forsaken. You feel left out. You feel overlooked. Mm -hmm. right? You feel that way. Amen. And now, has anybody ever felt that way? And I'm talking about you feel that way about God. Mm -hmm. Has anybody ever felt that way? Yes, I have. I have. Yes. But then, what has God told us? He says, when you feel that way, mm -hmm. He says, uh, uh, we should not faint, but we should mount up like right. wings of eagles. In other words, grab a hold of faith and, and remember what I said mm -hmm. and believe what I said above what you feel. Mm -hmm. And as a natural human being, we're not trained to be that way. That's right. We're trained to go by what we see first and your feelings are just, that's just your feelings. But God says, no, take my word by faith and always Lean on that. No matter what goes. And that's not always easy to do because that's not how we've been trained mm -hmm. in this world. Amen. That's why we have to get into the Word. And we see that. Alright? That's a whole lot to talk about the what? Him healing folks. Mm -hmm. But then as we go on, it says, And some Pharisees came up to him, testing him. Alright? Now, I told you who was in the crowd, right? Mm -hmm. So the Pharisees are there. Now, they came to Jesus, but and they, and they come pious. Oh, how you doing? Mm -hmm. Good master. Teacher. They call them all a wonderful name. Watch out when people call you all wonderful stuff. Mm -hmm. Be careful. You know, because a lot of times, it may not always, I'm not saying all the time, mm -hmm. but sometimes, mm -hmm. it may not be what, what they really think about you. Amen. They come smiling, showing you all their, you know, their pearly teeth and everything and grinning and whatnot. But you got to make sure that you know. You know who you know. You got good friends. They, they, they're like, okay, all right, I know. But then you also got people that come up to you out of the blue or sometimes, or maybe sometimes they just kind of hanging around. Because th these Pharisees, they've been hanging around Jesus the whole time. Amen. And they listen to what he's been saying the whole time. And the whole time they have gained nothing. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they don't want what Jesus is offering. They want what they want. So that makes them their own what? God. Mm -hmm. I'm my own God is what the Pharisees will say I do what I want to do and they don't they will never ever bend the will the, the will to Jesus because see there are a lot of things in the in the natural mind that I might want to do but then I compare it to the scripture mm -hmm. and the scripture says well no that's not what you should be doing so then what do I have to do with my will suppress my will and agree with what the will oh, of God that's right that's right all right? That's what repentance is all about. You want to do something, God says that's wrong. And you have to then what? Agree with God that it's wrong. All right? And then you focus on what God wants you to do. So let's look at these Pharisees. Let's, let's look at what they're talking about. 
And they, they came to him to test him. So you see why this question is important and in the, in the purpose as to why it was asked. It's, it was He's dealing with this for the who? For the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. And they began to question him saying, is it lawful for a, for a man to divorce his wife? All right. That was the question that the Pharisees asked because the Pharisees are trying to maintain that what? Justification for that action on what they were trying to do. They were trying to say, well, I can leave anybody I want to and marry anybody I want to, and I'll find legal ways of doing it. Mm -hmm. I got it. You got it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And so, uh, but Jesus, what? He looked right through that question. He looked right into their heart. He looked right into their actions, and he knew exactly. I know exactly what you're trying to get to. Mm -hmm. You're trying to justify. Now, does it also apply outside of the realm of the Pharisees? Of course it does. It applies to all of us. Mm -hmm. But we want to make sure that we understand why he was directing it this way. And we're going to see this very uh, 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 clearly in just a bit. All right. So, um, so the Pharisees asked this question. Uh, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife uh, for any cause at all? Because see, that's what the Pharisees wanted to do. No matter what. Okay. And he answered and said to them, what did Moses command you? Now, hmm. Jesus points them right back to who? Mm -hmm. To Moses. The one they're supposed to be acting out of. Exactly. Because they're supposed to be following the Mosaic law. Keeping right. in mind, the Pharisees at this time, they don't have the New Testament like we got it. They don't have the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Because they haven't been what? Written yet. Yeah. So they're following what? The, the, the writings of the, of the Mosaic yeah. writings and some of the, the prophets that, were, that they had. <coughs> uh, the writings of, Saul, uh, of uh, Samuel and so forth. And so... Jesus points them right back to Moses. <clears throat> and they said, Moses permitted a man to write a certificate of divorce and send her away. Now that's what they, and they knew it, and they knew it uh, by heart. You know, there's a lot of scriptures that people know by heart. You know why? Because those, those are scriptures that apply advantage to them. <laughs> Justification scriptures? <laughs> Justification. <laughs> All right. Now, let me tell you something. You know who else knows the, knows the Bible better than you? The devil. The devil. And he uses it. Mm -hmm. He used it. He used it. He used it right in the face of Jesus. Yes, he did. He told Jesus, "It is written, cast yourself down here, for it is written, the angels will bear thee up, yeah. lest thee dash your foot against the stone." And Jesus had to, had to tell the devil, "Get thee behind me, Satan." Right. So, uh, just because people use scripture, don't make them godly. That's right. They don't they're not always godly because they use scripture. The devil used scripture. Amen. Mm -hmm. right? And a lot of people use scripture to, to say a whole bunch of stuff. Oh Lord, I don't even know if I want to get it down there. Mm -hmm. Go down that alley. But I, I might just have to mention it a little bit. You know, because you know, Malachi says that if if you don't bring your tithes and you what? Curse, curse with a, a curse with a what? Curse with a curse. Mm -hmm. Bring that so that means you gotta do what? Pay you got to bring that money in. Mm -hmm. You don't bring that money in, you all, you curse. You mm -hmm. can't, don't expect to get money. And they put that in. And why people would say that in a church service, two people that you are supposed to be trying to what? Help. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't get it. Because even when you go back to Malachi, you have to, once again, read the context. Why is Malachi saying this? For mm -hmm. what purpose? I guarantee you 99% of the people that you were saying this to don't apply to that. So why are you trying to make people what? Feel bad. Feel guilty. Well, the reason why you're trying to make them feel bad is because you want them to do what? I mm -hmm. want you to dig deep. Mm -hmm. I could go on and on. I could talk a lot, a lot about that. But I'm going to leave I'm gonna leave them folks alone and move on. Uh, did you have a question? Did you want to say? No. <laughs> he left because we've had this conversation a hundred times. <laughs> 101, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, make it 102 then. There you go. <laughs> he says, But uh, have you not read that he who created them from the what? From the, the beginning. beginning. Because, see, when you go back to Genesis, isn't Genesis part of the law of Moses? Amen. But they don't want to go back to Genesis. They want to go back to the part that fits them. See, if I can find in the Bible where it says, And if they spit on you, slap them till you get tired. 
All right. That ain't in the Bible, though, is it? No. But sometimes you would want to find that scripture, right? You want to, mm -hmm. I, I want to find that scripture that says slap them, and, and you, but you can't find it. Amen. See, there's a lot of stuff that I would like, but then when you happen to come across something that you could take out of context, because see, now, I can tell you this. The Bible does say Judas went and hung himself. Mm -hmm. And the Bible also says, go do thou likewise. Now, did I just quote the Bible? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, but, but, but did I take it com completely out of context? Wait. Put two scriptures that have no purpose Connection. can be connected at all, and I connected them and called it the Word of God. Not rightly dividing the word. Not rightly dividing. Yeah. I'm really doing what? I'm lying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm being. A, it's a. It's a heresy. Yeah. And it's it's irreverent. It, 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 irreverent. Thank you. Irreverent. <laughs> Come on, Amy's <English>, mate. <laughs> Glad to have her back here. Yes, Lord. God bless. Get that. Get them words straight, because I, I'll, I'll tap. I can tap the King's English in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Lord. All right. So he says. Uh, so, have you not read that from the beginning, God, uh, uh, that he made them both male and what? And female. Yeah. All right. And, and he said, for this cause, a man will what? Leave his father and mother and will cleave to his wife. All right. So, that is the, the initial instructions. That is the goal. Amen. That is what we're supposed to be striving to have, right? Right. And the two will become what? One, One flesh. flesh. Uh, consequently, there is no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. Now, that's God's perfect union right there. Amen. When God created Adam and Eve, that was what? That perfect what? Union. union. Right. Now, what God has designed for us in perfection Unfortunately, because of what? Sin, sin. We can't what? We can't obtain that. That's right. Because, see, you can. Boy, you, you, you can. How much time right now? Yeah. Remember when Jesus said on the Sermon on the Mount, um, what did Moses' law say? That thou shalt not commit adultery. Mm -hmm. Right? But then Jesus said, but I. Say unto you. In other words, I'm going to show you the real spirit of this writing. Mm -hmm. But I say unto you that if you look upon a woman with desire in your heart, you did what? You already committed adultery in your, in your heart. So what Jesus did with the law of Moses was he, he and he and he said a whole bunch of other stuff about that. I said Moses said this, but I say this. Mm -hmm. You know, because Moses said, "Thou shalt not what kill." Kill. But he said, "But if you if you have." Hatred or evil in your heart towards your brother, you have already you are already guilty as if you had killed him. Amen. So what Jesus did, he took the laws of Moses and he said, "Let me show you what the its intention is. Look at this. It's not the natural action. See, it's not whether you slapped him in the head. It's whether you wanted to. Mm -hmm. Now, see, there's a lot of people I wanted to slap. Yeah. Y'all ever drive on the highway? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> You see some of these people, right? And and your your anger just what in the world? He cut in front of me. But then you you know dealing with different folks and different things. We always have that what that we gotta suppress. Why? Because we born in sin, right. shaped in iniquity. So then, how then can I achieve this perfection that God is telling me that I should should achieve? How should I achieve this thing here where? Um, uh, where I should be like what Jesus just pointed out here. I'm going to be with my, my wife and, uh, and, and we're no longer ever going to separate and I'm going to be perfect in that union. Well, number one, I'm not going to be perfect in that union. Amen. And number two, even if I don't leave her, if you've been married for any point period of time, have you ever thought in your mind, why am I here? Okay, amen, lights. Amen. My wife is a, my wife is a wonderful person. But sometimes you get to the point where you go, what am I doing? Why am I here? What's happening? And then you do what? You come to your senses and you move along. So then, but according to Jesus, what? You are already what? Guilty. That's the key. 
See, the Pharisees are trying to what? Justify. Jesus is trying to say, you're guilty. You're, you're guilty because you're born in sin, dude. You're born in it. So why are you trying to justify? Re admit that you are a what? Sinner. And then obtain the what? Perfect mercy. righteousness right. from Jesus. All right? So we did that illustration before, right? Where we talked about how Jesus' righteousness is imputed to you. All right? Remember that? Well, that's a, the, you know, you have this, you got, you got your, your, your works here. This is, this is your life. Remember that show? This is your life. This is your life. <laughs> this is your life. And so the books, you open it, and, and, and so when you come up in, in eternity, they hand me hand you the book. You know, give me the book for, for, for John Smith. Okay, oh John. Oh, okay, John Smith. Oh, John Smith, you boy, you are a sinner for sure. I can see you're a sinner. Oh, look at your thought life and your actions and the intentions of your heart. You are really bad. All right. And that's all in here. That's in John Smith's record. All right. But what Jesus says that he does what? He takes your sins, he casts them into the what? Sea of forgetfulness. And they're gone. And then what does he do? He takes the righteousness of Jesus and puts it in your in your book. Jesus. Alright? So now when the Father opens up and Jesus opens up the book, all they see is wow. Not a spot or a blemish. Just mm. perfect. Wow. Never thought anything wrong, never did anything wrong, never said anything wrong. Come on into the joys of the Lord. Mm. That's what the imputing of Jesus' righteousness does Jesus. for you. Mm. So why are you still so focused like these Pharisees trying to prove that you are perfect? Mm. Because you are what? No. You are this. Not, not this, but you, you know what that, you, that's what you are. So therefore... The Pharisees trying to justify themselves. And that's why they ask this question. And Jesus is letting them know, look, when God made man and woman, he made them to be together forever and never ever wanted them to, to question or, or, or be concerned about and know that I am with you always, never ever separate. Well, because of our sinful heart, um, I dare say I don't know if anybody has ever said that, has ever been able to do that. Because we all have that what desire to want to know, well, did I make a mistake? We get what confused, we get worried, we get uh, doubtful. Mm -hmm. You get we get angry. Mm -hmm. You know, you can do some things in anger that you really don't mean. Amen. Amen. Lights. Amen. <laughs> That's true. You do some. You can say. You can say some things that you. Oh, I got. I don't know what, what made me say that. Yeah, I know what made you say that. Mm -hmm. You were angry. You were mad, but you didn't mean it. But when you're dealing with, with relationships and with family and whatnot, when you say certain things, you know, um, unfortunately, sometimes you can't take it back. You can apologize, right. but you don't said it already. Yeah. But let's keep on. Let's see what he's got to say. And Jesus answered and said to them, because of the hardness. Oh, let me make sure I go back up there. And then, and then let me, uh, I skip one part. Mm -hmm. Then they said to him, why then did Moses command to give a certificate of divorcement and, and to put her away? And then Jesus answered and said unto them, because of the what? Hardness of your heart. What's another way of saying that? Because of the sinfulness in your heart. Mm -hmm. Because, see, if Moses didn't do that, then people would get into other things. You see, uh, well, then if I can't divorce her, I got to do what? I'm going to sleep around. I'm going to either sleep around or get rid of her. Or, 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 what did you say? You're a killer. Yeah, you're a killer. So, because of the hardness, because when you get something in your heart, I'm getting rid of her. I don't care what. And I'm going to stay righteous. Now, how are you going to do that? Can't. You can't. So, therefore, what the, would what, what the Pharisees do? Back then, the, 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 and, and, and people liked the Pharisees, because even before the Pharisees was, was developed, back when Moses' day, there were people that had that same kind of mindset. See, that heart of the Pharisee is not new. It's always been around. Amen. Um, uh, Cain had that same, mm -hmm. same problem, mm -hmm. you know, because Cain was trying to present to God uh, uh, his works. Look at these beautiful things that I built. You know, these, these beautiful uh, vegetables and, 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 and fruits and, and different things that I grew and I did this. Whereas Abel was the keeper of what? 
sheep. Mm -hmm. And why was Abel a keeper of sheep? They didn't eat sheep back then. They didn't start eating meat until after the flood. So he was keeping the sheep because he, he recognized when Adam and Eve clothed themselves in the same thing that same things that Cain was raising, which was what? The fig leaves. Mm -hmm. God said that ain't sufficient. Mm -hmm. You can't clothe yourself in fig leaves. So then who did the first slaying of an animal? God. Did. God. He went and what? Slayed an animal, yeah. took the skins, and did what? Covered. Mm -hmm. Which is the same thing, which is a type of what happens to us spiritually. Just like they were covered in the natural with the animal skin, we are covered what? With the blood, blood of Jesus. With the blood of Jesus. Huh. We take on his righteousness. Amen. And you cover it so that their, 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 their shame didn't what? Show. show. And Jesus covers us so our what? Our shame, shame doesn't, doesn't show. show. Mm -hmm. So these are the things that we, you know, but because of the hardness of your heart, if you don't accept that, then you know you just go on and do things that you want to do and still try to consider yourself as what? Righteous. That's right. And you're doing it in your own effort. And that pharisaical and that mindset started way back with Cain. Mm -hmm. right? And Jesus told, and, and the father told Cain, he says, why are you upset? Why are you mad? Don't you know if you, if you understand and do the right thing, you can have just what Abel had. Mm -hmm. But instead he went and did what? He killed Abel. Mm -hmm. Uh, says uh, he wrote this commandment to you, right? Because he says because of the hardness of your heart, Moses permitted you to divorce your wife, but from the beginning it was uh, uh, not. It has not been this way, right? So he's saying from the beginning this is not how how God wanted it. Now, when you go to the beginning, we recognize that that was Adam and Eve before they fell. There was a, 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 a beauty that was supposed to be there. Now, one of the things that, and, and we'll, we'll go into this in depth when we get, to, when we get into the, uh, uh, the, new, the, uh, the Old Testament, but just to kind of highlight this, oftentimes when we think about how Eve was what? Deceived by the serpent. Mm -hmm. And Adam had to make a choice. What am I going to do here? This woman done did this and... I can step away, or do I join her? But Adam saw her as his what? His wife. Right. And he chose to what? Join her. Join. And he did it what? On purpose. Mm -hmm. Knowing the consequences. All right. But, but it's, a, it's akin to what Jesus did. Look at these people. They're sin. What am I going to do? I'm going to join. But what Adam couldn't do was that he couldn't get Eve out of he, he could once he joined Eve, he couldn't get himself and Eve what uh, out of I, sin. That's right. But Jesus, when he joined us, he can not only raise himself, mm -hmm. but he also can what raise, raise us. us. That's the beauty of the second Adam, mm -hmm. the strength of mm -hmm. the second Adam over the first Adam. All right. So therefore, when we continue, it says, and again in the house, the disciples question him. So now. The disciples are listening to this and they're going, wow, this is amazing. I, mean, we, I never really heard of this. And so they're confused themselves. Mm -hmm. and, that, that, and, and they're going to stay here in a minute. <laughs> they're going to be like, Jesus, if it was like this, I don't think nobody should ever get married. Mm -hmm. And it is. That would be true if you're trying to be perfect mm -hmm. in your own righteousness. Then no. <laughs> you had that ever. But if you're going to live Guess what? You're going to make mistakes. Thanks. You're going to have ups and you're going to have downs. But then God tells you to what? To live. To go on. Marriage is still honorable. You still go. And wherever it, 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 it goes and how it takes you, you got to go and do it in the what? In the name of the Lord. Amen. Knowing that, yeah, I'm going to have my good days and I'm going to have my bad days. I'm going to have days where I'm, I'm, I'm proud of how things are. I don't have days when I don't feel ashamed of how things are. But at the same time, we're living in a, a, a day today similar to how it truly was in the days of Moses where there were situations where people had to, had life that just happened. And that's the one thing that, that you can't avoid. And that is what? Life. Right. It happens. Right? We don't know what's going to happen. But once it happens, what do you got to do? You got to what? Deal with it. Move on. You wake up one day, you got a pain in the side. Next thing you know, you got some kidney problems. 
You work up one day, you got a pain in your, when you. Next thing you know, you got some heart problems. One day you got you got something in your head. Next thing you know, you know they said you got. That's life, man. Amen. And that's in the natural dealing with health. What about the emotions? So we forget about that. You know, so one day you wake up and all of a sudden you're feeling a certain way. You're thinking a certain way. That's what life right. and Jesus recognizes it, which is why we need to be in the Word of God. Amen. Because Amen. in the Word of God is where we're going to be able to to help. Maneuver all those emotions, all that that myriad of, of, of variety of feelings and life and circumstances that happen to us, and we can make sense of it. All right. Let me get finished here because uh, that's my clock keeper. She let me know you're going too long. <laughs> all right. Where was I at? Where was I at? Where? Moses. Yes. And again, uh, in the house, the disciples questioned him about. Uh, the same thing and he said to them I say unto you whosoever uh, divorces his wife uh, divorces his wife not for uh, infidelity and marries another woman commits adultery so what he's saying is if you do that you have did what you have committed adultery All right. mm -hmm. now uh, against her. Now, remember what Jesus said on the Sermon on the Mount. Is anybody really not guilty of this? Because he said, if anybody thinks in his mind, he is what? Guilty. Guilty. And then the scripture says, and somebody will say, well, you know what? Because he's going to talk about, in a minute, he's going to talk about eunuchs. Right? Because cause then the, the, the eunuch was standing up and said, I, I've never been guilty of this. <laughs> I've never been guilty of this. And that could be true for the what? For the unit. But then what does, what does Jesus say? If you are guilty of one, one, you are what? Guilty of all. So when you're drowning, and if you're drowning because you slipped off the pier and fell into the water, or if you're drowning because you dived in on purpose, and you, you kind of lost your way, or if you got thrown in there by somebody else, no matter, I don't care what any of those circumstances are, you are still what? Drowning. No matter the how you got there, you're in, it. you're in it. So when you are when you are in this world, guess what? You are in what? You're in sin. sin. And that's the part that the Pharisees miss. And this is why Jesus is saying, the scripture wants us to, to be perfect. That's your goal. You need to be perfect. You need to improve life and develop and get, and get to perfection. That's what the Bible tells Jesus said, be ye what? Perfect, perfect as yeah. my Father. Heavenly Father is perfect. That's your goal. How y'all doing with that? Working on it. All right. But guess what? You don't have to work on it. You can have it. Mm -hmm. And how do you have it? Through Jesus. Through Jesus. That's what you trust in. Now, like he said, do you still work day to day to try to, because you start with where you what? Where you are. Oh, right. If you've got a drug dealer, he's been, he's been dealing drugs all his life. And he wants to give his heart to the, to, to the Lord. Do you got to tell him, well, you got to go back there and get all them drugs back in? No, man. Look, that's done. Start where you what? Where oh, you are. Right. You got to lie. He's been lying all his life. Mm -hmm. I, I lied about everything. Right, now, what do you do? You got to go back and take all them lies back? No. What do you do? Stop Start where you are. <laughs> I'm going to fix it from right here. And you meet you where you're at. That's it. And, meet you where you're at. and that's the key. And what does that do? It takes away the what? Self-righteousness. Mm -hmm. Now, let me just throw this in and then we're going to be done. We're almost done here. Why does somebody want to be self-righteous? What's the purpose? What's the goal? What's, what's the game? What's the, what's the perk to for have being... The, to have... Um, the things that they want to have, the way that they want to have it, to mm -hmm. do what they want to do. Mm -hmm. They to not have um, no one telling them what to do, or not to change the way that they are. Okay, all right. To, to live life the way you want to live it, regardless. That's one perk. What else? <coughs> what is the other thing that when people that are self righteous, what do they. Because, see, think about the devil. Look at me. Look at me. I'm, per I'm, I'm, I'm great because I did this. 
I never, I never, I don't curse, I don't do this, I don't steal. Remember when Jesus told and, the, the and two? And you might not do some of those things that you're saying, mm -hmm. but you're still a sinner. Mm -hmm. Saved by grace. Yeah. All the glory. All right, that's that. So, so, so we got that. Uh, being able to do what you want, having the glory. Yeah, but there's one it's other control. thing. Hmm? Control. He wants to live. If I earned it, then I can do what I want with it. All right, all right, all right. That kind of goes with, uh, with like what Regina said. I agree with that. Yep. But what else? There's one other thing. And see, if I'm self righteous, because see, you know what? Let me, let, let me, let me put on myself, let me put on my self righteous hat here for a moment. Mm -hmm. See, 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 I'm self I, I, I'm, 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 I have not done any of this stuff that y'all have done. just want to let you know that I'm godly man of God. And I do all things proper and all things right. And uh, you're not as good as, as, oh, there he goes. See there? Pride. What was the devil's biggest thing? Pride. Pride. See? I can just, they crack it up on Because <laughs> I got my self-righteous hat on. But see, I can then say, things that you have done, I've never done things like that. I've never done what you, done. I've never experienced that kind of degrading life activity like you. What am I, what am I doing? I'm putting you down. down and, and I'm lifting up myself. What am, I'm, I'm glorifying myself. In the base of having, you. Hmm? In the base of you. Put you down. That's it. Yes, let me take this off. I don't like having that. <laughs> <laughs> and also what that does is, um, because you're self-righteous, who are you? You're your own God. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you, you could flip the, the, the um, script. You could say whatever he's done, if you do it, oh, now it's perfect now mm -hmm. because I've done it. Oh, yeah, you find way. And that's, and that's, <laughs> the, that's the whole purpose. And we, we were talking about that. Oh, oh, why the Pharisees are doing this. That's it. Because, see, I can find a way in the Word of God that can show that what I'm doing is what? Right. right. Instead of saying, God, look, I'm, <laughs> I messed up. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and I can't go back and unscramble them eggs, mm -hmm. but, I, but I'm sorry. And you do what? You no. repent. You apologize. But the Bible said that every man is right in his own life. That's right. And that's what happens. That's what happens. We get to that point. So now even the, after Jesus dealt with the question of the Pharisees, now even the disciples are a little bit, because the disciples were raised in this teaching environment that the Pharisees had structured. The Pharisees had structured this. And the disciples have been raised in this. And so, they go, and they say, he says, uh, what do we leave with? Right here. He says, and if she, a woman, puts away her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. So it don't matter which way it flips, either way. Alright? It says, and his disciples said unto him, If this situation of a man with a woman is like this, it is good not to marry. <laughs> now, the, the disciples are like, that's, that's just too much here. They're looking at it as though, I, I don't think I can be that perfect. Which is what? True. You can't be that perfect. So therefore, how then shall we go? How shall we live? We live by what? By faith. faith. We trust God every step of the way. Now when you're trusting God every step of the way, guess what? Some steps you make may not be what? Right. Good steps. Mm -hmm. But you still do what? I'm trusting God. I'm not trusting in my perfection. And that's the thing that people, and oftentimes people have this, this secondary perfection. Well, I know before I came to Christ, I wasn't perfect. But now that I know Jesus, I'm perfect. And that's not correct either. Because even as being a child of God, remember when Peter was talking, when Jesus was talking to Peter? And Peter was a follower and a disciple of Jesus. Amen. And Jesus was telling them, I'm going to have to die. I'm going to go, because Peter had just confessed that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. God. And Jesus told him, well, I'm going to go down. I'm going to be evil and treated, and I'm going to be put to death. And Peter stood up, because Peter was taught by the ways of his religious structure of his day that the Messiah was coming to rule. rule. And right. Peter corrected Jesus and said, not so, Lord. You will not die. And Jesus turned to Peter his disciple, 
his follower, mm-hmm. and said to Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. He recognized the conversation that was coming out of Peter's mouth was one that, ex- that exemplified what Satan would want to happen. Jesus not to die. Mm. He came to die. Amen. Why did he come to die? Because he knows so that, that mm-hmm. we, need, we need him to live. All right. Finishing this up. All right. And, uh, and so they said that it is good not to marry. And he said to them, now, this, is, this is what Jesus' final statement on this. And I think this is a, a, a important. Hi, girl. <laughs> Not everyone receives this word. What did Jesus just say? Not everyone will receive this word. They they, they're accept. not going to do this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, this, is not, this is not something I'm going to deal with. All right? But to, to whom it has been given. All right. So that means that there are certain people that will look at this and say, I see this and I accept it. Mm. I receive it. So it's been given. And then he says, for there are eunuchs, and a eunuch is a person that, that uh, has no desire for matrimony yeah. whatsoever uh, for a variety of reasons. I'm not going to get into that. Uh, there are eunuchs who were born uh, that way from their mother's womb. Mm-hmm. All right? Never having that, 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 that desire. Right? And dealing with the question of it is good not to, not to marry. And there are eunuchs that are made eunuchs by men. There were people, back, especially back in those days when, they would, when one nation would capture another. <laughs> hey, Satan. And uh, they would put, they would uh, uh, castrate uh, some of the men that they captured and put them in, in charge of certain guards and, and different things so that they, you know, their whole desire would be just to do their work and, and like I said, I'm not going to go too deep into that. Mm. All right. And there are eunuchs who kept themselves eunuchs because of the kingdom of heaven. So they decided I just want to do that because I want to focus all my attention on, uh, on one task. And Jesus points out the task of, of serving the kingdom of heaven. All right. So and he says, he who is able to receive it, let him receive it. Mm-hmm. So what he's saying is, when you, and this is to the to the who to the disciples. He's already dealt with the Pharisees, right? He told the Pharisees that, that you know you guys were doing this uh, for the purpose of trying to justify yourself. Mm-hmm. But for the disciples, he's letting them know that there are there are things that are are difficult and hard, and if you're trying to walk in the ways of God. To walk into things like marriage, to walk into things uh, that, that, that binds you with another person, you are going to have to be able to receive the good and the bad, the up and the down, the confusion, and know that you are going to, because you're living in this world and who you are, you are going to what? Make mistakes. You're going to say something that's going to make your wife go, oh, he, he hurt me. Why would he say that if he say he what? He loved me. Vice versa. Right? But then that's part of the whole relationship. And there are going to be times when you are going to be wrong and you're going to need to do what? Apologize. Apologize. Right? And so if you're going to enter into that relationship, it's not for everybody, but for people that are willing to, to step into that by faith, mm-hmm. be prepared to, to, because your sin, when, when you look at yourself and you look at your, how you are, you can see where you need to work on things. But then when you get married, that other person can see it too. <laughs> bye bye. So let me get done here. I'm finished. Any other comments or questions? Um, I'll, I'll leave, I'll leave. Did Paul say, I would that we all could be like him, but it's better to marry than to burn? Was yes. he similarly saying that? Because he kept himself. Yes. You know, and, you know like, and, God knows what you can and can't do. That yeah. does not make people think, oh, because you're married, that you, you can't keep yourself. Marriage is honorable in all, the Bible says, and the bed is undefiled. So, exactly. you know, God don't want us sleeping around doing stuff. We would, he would rather you love that person mm-hmm. 
He said it's not good to be unequally yoked. But if you really need to be married, be married. Right. But it's like you said, it's coming with some stuff. It's better to marry than to yeah, burn. It's coming but with then, some stuff. But then you better know what you're yeah, walking in. Exactly. And you're walking in a situation where yeah. you're going to need God's grace and God's goodness. Um, and which is why um, I, I'm, I'm going to take one minute to say this. It's important not to put cookie cutter answers to everything. That's right. Because what works for you may not work for you. And what works for you may not work for me. It's all in the arena of God. Everything that we do has to come from the what? From the word of God. All right? But then at the same time, when I say everything, that means the wrong as well. Because when you do wrong, is that addressed in the word of God? Yes. So therefore, everything that you do has to be applied here. And if you don't apply it here, then you're creating your own reality of justification. So no matter what it is, you have to make sure that you're focusing on the what? On the word. And yes, uh, you could go, uh, which is why when I started this, I wanted to make sure we were, were, that this was not an exhaustive, uh, an exhaustive teaching on what? On marriage. Right. He's dealing with the, with the perception that the Pharisees have. Mm -hmm. Now, if you get into that, you got to pull in Paul. Yeah. You got to pull in uh, the writings of James. You got to pull in all these things, and then you got to go throughout... And then even with that, is that going to make your marriage perfect? No. That's no. no, not. So then you still going to need what? Grace. Grace. <laughs> and mercy. Oh, yeah. All right. We're not done. We're just going to stop. Okay. Amen. All right? Because we could go God on and on and talk about this. Anybody else with a comment? All right, brother. Give us a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today, Lord, saying thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you yes. for your word today, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for how you've carried us through about marriage, Lord. Lord, we thank you that you've even given us wives, Lord, those that you have given wives and husbands. Father, we thank you for them. Father, we pray for the married couples today, Lord, that you continue to seal the marriage, Lord, because you said in your word that marriage is honorable, but the bed is undefiled. Father, we pray for our young people, Lord, that they one day will seek the same thing out that we did. Father, that we pray that they may find your love and find the one that they love. Father, that they will want to honor you. Father, because all honor and glory belong to you, Lord. Yes. We thank you for it today, Lord. We thank you for each and every one that's here. Father, we thank you for the young people who uh, went away to college and they're back home safe. Father, we thank you for those that are away and working and they came back to visit us, Lord, and we're so happy to see them. Father, we thank you for them, Lord, how you uh, brought them over the airways and got them here safe. Father, we pray even that they get back safe. Father, and as we get ready to leave this place with never your love and never your presence, Father, we pray for those sick today, Lord. We pray for the bereaved families today, Lord. Yes. We pray, Lord, for the needs of your people everywhere. Yes. Lord, and as we go into this time of year, Lord, we're celebrating the birth of Christ, Lord. Yes. But, Father, we ask that you touch your people, Lord, that yes. we will re remember the less fortunate today, Lord, that we will want to reach out and help them, Lord, because you said the poor will always have with us. Father, we thank you for them today, Lord, and we're praying for them. Yes. We even pray for the homeless people, yes. Lord, yes. because we look at the weather, Lord, and we see that it's, it's going to be very cold. Father, we pray that they have coats, Lord. We pray that you touch our officials, Lord, our government officials, Lord. Yes. Give them a heart today, Lord. Take out the stony yes. hearts today, Lord, yes. that they will want to help people, Lord, because you came to help us, Lord, and let them see your love, Lord. And we thank you today, Lord. And as we get ready to leave this place, we'll never your love and never your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said amen. Amen.